The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. And Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. And Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> of course, this is one of the most well-known parables that Jesus ever spoke. The idea of the rich man being compared with Lazarus, the poor man who couldn't even eat the waste off of people's tables, who was considered to be lower in the food chain than the dogs themselves. And yet somehow in Jesus' parable, it is Lazarus who is rewarded, and it is the rich man who pays a terrible price for his life. To a lot of people in this world, you read this and you worry. None of us in here is lacking for our basic needs tonight. We're, none of us can relate directly to Lazarus. But we can relate to the rich man. And that becomes very scary when you hear this parable. Because you relate to the person who ends up being punished instead of relating to the person who is rewarded by God. First of all, I will tell you that it's not about who had what in this story. It's about behaviors and attitudes and how we treat one another. The truth is, is that God bestows grace on us all, even the poorest of all in the human race. Those who are rich like the rich man in this story, are also blessed with grace by God. What they do with that grace 
becomes the question. What do you do with the riches and the grace that God has bestowed upon you? And by the way, when I say the word riches, I am not talking about your wealth. I'm talking about your love and your blessings. What do you do with those? Do you share them freely with others? Do you see every single person in this world as your brother and your sister, as your equal? The rich man failed at this. <clears throat> there is an old theory in Christian ethics that says that the people who understand what it is to be the community of Christ the most are always those who are the poorest because they know what it means to have to rely upon one another in order to survive. There are many stories through the years of people who spent literally years trying to get a job in communities in inner cities finally got their opportunity and on the first day of work the neighbor's child was sick and they would call in to stay home and take care of the neighbor's child risking their job and their future <clears throat> So many of us in our society today would criticize that person for that. What are you doing? You're throwing away your opportunity. No, the truth is you're sharing love. There's a big difference between those two things. What is the greater opportunity in your life? Is it at your job? Is it your wealth? Or is it the opportunity you have to love others? What is the greatest opportunity in your life? I would argue that the greatest opportunity you have in life is to love one another and love the Lord your God. That is the greatest opportunity you have in life. It's very simple, really. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, we will have guests here this weekend from Foods Resource Bank. The concept of Foods Resource Bank is that every single person around the world deserves the opportunity to live a healthy, happy life that we are all brothers and sisters, that we all matter, and that even if we never meet the person we help, we still have a responsibility to help them. So Foods Resource Bank works with churches to raise money for grants. And they work with farmers who give up portions of their field so that those proceeds can go into grants. And then they go into communities in third world countries and ask, what do you believe you need in order to become more self-sustaining? We're not going to tell you what to do. We want to know what you believe you need to succeed because you know your community and your region better than we do. One of the absolute great success stories is in a province in Asia where everything is on a hill, on a mountainside in these villages. And every year they plant crops. And every year when the rainy season comes, all the crops run right down the hill and are lost. And so Foods Resource Bank went in and said, what do you need? How do we help you fix this? And a bunch of leaders in the community said, all we think we need to do is find a way to 
stabilize the soil <laughs> so it doesn't run down the hill. They ended up planting hedges. It worked. It can be that simple. This isn't rocket science. Another community in Africa, everybody kept getting sick. Why were they getting sick? Because all of their eating utensils were on the ground. When Foods Resource Bank went in and said, what do you need? They said, we need better hygiene. How do we keep these things clean in a hut built on dirt? Shelves. Little wooden shelves. Again, this isn't rocket science. Other communities, they built grain silos. I want you to understand, a grain silo to us is this big, huge building. A grain silo, some of those communities can be as small as a shed or even a water heater, just something to put the food in so that the rats don't eat it. It really is fairly simple for us to make a difference in the world. That's Foods Resource Bank. Think about the ELCA World Hunger Appeal, dietitians working with people in other countries to feed children who are starving, and not just feed them, because you can feed people and still have them be sick. They need a balanced nutritional diet. So when we support the ELCA World Hunger Appeal, we're making sure that kids get vitamins that they need, not just one particular food source, but a variety of food sources so that they have all the nutrition they need. And of course, we do this here too, right? We have the soup kettle on Friday nights. It's not just the homeless who are here. There are a lot of seniors in this community who are struggling to make ends meet on a very, very defined budget. And there are some who are just lonely and have nobody else to eat with. <clears throat> and then, of course, there is our support of things like the LSSI, Elgin Facility, Lutheran Social Services, helping people to rebuild their lives. There's our after-school program, mentoring children, after-school hours, so that instead of just wandering home and sitting there by themselves, they are here with us with role models, mentoring, tutoring, playing games with them, and giving them nutritional snacks that come from the Northern Illinois Food Pantry. There's our summer lunch program, we actually spend time getting to know these kids in our neighborhood and their parents. And oh, by the way, some of those parents on the very last day of this summer brought food to our staff as a thank you. When we talk about where God is calling us and where our future is taking us, we have so many opportunities to love. Because the greatest opportunity that God gives us is to love others. Your opportunities in life are not measured by your wealth or your home or your job or your car. Your opportunities in life are measured by your love and your grace. People will not remember how big of a house you had but they will remember how big of a heart you had. That is opportunity. God is calling us. God is calling us to love. God is calling us to share grace. God is calling us to treat one another truly as brothers and sisters. God is calling us to be his family in this world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.